Hi there. I am here with Vegan Still resident and owner of H4L Dance Company, Christine Harrison. How are you, Christine? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks so much for joining us today. We had a little conversation yesterday about an incident that happened to you regarding testing. You are going on an essential travel trip, a medical reason for your son, and you were refused to be tested at the Kirkland testing center yes. for COVID-19. Tell exactly. me what happened yesterday. Yeah. So yesterday we we're flying out Friday morning. So we left. So we need to have it within like the 72 hour mark to enter the US. So we went to the Kirkland Coliseum, my son and I, who's seven, and I walked in and they said, why are you coming to be tested? And I said, because I'm traveling for medical reasons. And he said, the security guard stopped me right there. And he said, no, 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 you cannot be tested here. And I looked around and there's nobody there. And I said, well, well, well how come? He said, you're just not allowed. And then he points to three phone numbers and he said, take a picture of that. That's what you have to call. And then I thought, okay, maybe there's a special spot for people who are traveling, I don't know. So I went back in my car and I thought, okay, let me check it out. So I went back to my car and I started calling. And then I quickly realized that these are private clinics um, and it's $250 a person to be tested. I'm thinking, I've just been deemed essential through, thank you, the offices of uh, our local MP, Francis uh, Scarpaleccia. And how is it now that I'm paying $250 for my son and I to be tested? So I thought to myself, well, I'm going to go back in and say, I need to be tested. I'm really sorry. I've been a deemed essential. Maybe that will help. So I go back in. The security guard was like, listen, I don't know. Keep walking. So I thought, okay, so maybe he doesn't really know or I don't know. So I keep going and I go through the whole process, register him, get to, this, to, the, to the front where I'm about to be tested and I'm giving him our Medicare cards. And then again, I get asked and I, and I tell him the truth. And I said, well, we're traveling for medical reasons. She said, oh, I can't test you. I'm thinking, why not? I'm, I'm right here. And she said, no. And I said, but I'm traveling for medical reasons. It's not pleasure. Anyways. Can you, elaborate on, can you elaborate on the medical reason? Sure. So my son has a developmental language disorder, a severe case. And we've been followed by a neurologist in Miami since April, 2019. And of course, during the big break of when the pandemic hit, we didn't travel for seven months and really affected his brain. Uh, they're kind of resetting brain pathways and things like that for him. Like a lot of his uh, developmental processes didn't actually happen properly. So he's got sort of a delayed brain, if that makes any sense. Okay. I just want uh, to clarify that is, you're not going for elective surgery. I wanted it to be clear. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is also to help him, you know, he's seven about to be eight and he still has like retention issues. He can't read really and write yet. And it's been a long struggle. I mean, this is a kid that wouldn't play with other children and ride a bike anyways. We've been through a lot. So it's really, it's really essential for his development and his progress. Um, and they don't offer this sort of treatment in Canada. So that's, that's really that's critical. A key, that's a key point here. Yeah. And I would, of course, would love to have not have to travel to the U.S., obviously, to go through all this, but not only financially, but also emotionally. Uh, yeah. So it's very imperative that we continue this treatment. It's not like a one shot thing and then everything's great. It's, it's been a process and it's a long term thing uh, for his brain. So it's almost like resetting his brain. Anywho, uh, yeah, so I get back in and anyways, I'm standing there and this woman comes over and they're like, listen, I'm really sorry. And I said, you're sorry? I said, how is it as a Quebec resident, as a Quebec or Canadian, that I'm not even allowed the social service of being tested when I'm, when I'm a Canadian to, to go for essential services? And she said, listen, I have no idea. This is what we've been told. And I said, do you understand how ridiculous this sounds? She's like, I do. And I thought, okay, great. Well, then just, I said, what if I had said I maybe have symptoms or my son has symptoms? She's like, you're right. We wouldn't have known. And I said, so doesn't that show you how ridiculous that is? And she's like, yeah. I said, what am I supposed to do? She's like, I don't know. Go to the media. Hilarious. So I said, I know Rhonda. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, but all kidding aside, it took us about four hours to figure out even where in the West Island that I could even pay to get tested because it's not clear when all the numbers that they gave, there's nothing in the West Island to even get tested, to pay to get tested, I should say. Anyways, and a quick, of course, and I've been uh, reaching out to not only the offices of Francis, but now they came back to me and said, it's most likely a, provi a provincial guideline. So gratefully, the, she reached out to the office of Greg Kelly, um, 
which is our representative for the West, for Jacques Cartier uh, on, a, on a provincial level. And his assistant, whose name is Jennifer, was so kind to write me. And now they're looking into this situation about even why is this happening to essential services? People who are traveling for essential reasons who have been deemed essential and have to still pay. And I think, listen, for anybody, like, there's no way I'm the only Quebecer traveling internationally for medical reasons. Am I not? Like for those who also are out there who are traveling for medical reasons, how is this happening? How do we not even have anything in place for people like us? There's zero information. And let me tell you, I am scraping. I'm like digging to get information about this and it hasn't been easy. And until we kind of got onto the lane of, of dealing directly with our MPs and things like that, I was in the dark. Like nobody really knows anything. Not even the people at the, I don't blame them, but the people at the testing clinics don't know anything. There is a sign. You were saying there was a sign on the door. Um, yeah. So, and again, that's what's so funny. And it looks like it's new. It's very bright and shiny. Um, and that's what she kept pointing to the, the the lady who I guess was going to administer the test. Perhaps she's a nurse. I'm not sure. And she just said, "Look, it says non-essential travel is not required. Is not deemed anyway. Something about non-essential travel. Non-essential travel is not deemed to to be tested. I get that. But right. you are showing your qualifications as an essential traveler." Yeah, and I said, I have, I have, I'll show you the emails that are going through. I'll show you the paperwork that I, I'm going through and everything. And listen, I, you know, they're just following mandates. She's do, you like, think, we can't... Do, you think, do you think if you had lied, you would have, you would have not had this experience? Yeah. Because there's no imagine? way, if I just walked in and said, I just, I, I, I was exposed to somebody and that's it. Potentially exposed. I would like to be tested. Yeah. And I, and I guess I didn't, and that's what's so funny. I didn't think that that would have been an issue. And then maybe, and then after researching, we do know that the government of Quebec has been very stringent recently and saying, you know, if you're gonna go, you're gonna pay and et cetera, which listen, I'm not gonna get into that issue, but, um, but I'm not traveling for those reasons. And how is it there's not even an exemption list? How is there not even the information for people like myself to be able to go do what I need to do to get on this plane? This is what's mind boggling. And, you know, it's like they enforce all these things that they are set and a year into this, by the way, a year into this. It's not the first time I've traveled to the US during this situation. I've traveled, this is my third time since uh, October okay. of 2020 that I'm traveling. So I've experienced and seen the changes along the way, uh, which is fine. It's just, again, it's all about information, right? The more informed we are, the better we can handle the situation and the better I can dirige myself to do the right thing but if i don't have any of the information and just keep getting roadblocks and no one's there to help you wh where do you go who do you call i checked the provincial site and for travel they do have a list of five or six options that are all private clinics so that's that's what they're offering but they're not there's no designation so far that i can see that we're essential non-essential and i yeah. think i think like most of the regulations that we've been living and like you know as things get rolled out the tweaking happens after but you're caught now. Your now your situation, I can pretty much guarantee, is going to cause a tweak. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great. And then I and it's not to be difficult. It's more, if anything, to to give us the ability to to know where to go to do the right thing during these unprecedented times. And I know it's unprecedented for, for everybody in the situation, even the the government. But how is like I understand they're just looping everybody together, but there's no way that there's just me little old me and my son traveling for medical reasons in quebec let alone canada ain't possible no way because my whole thing was also getting back into the country my massive fear with the sunlight with his issues on a very strict diet very strict um food intake that he's only allowed to have and knowing that i might have to be you know detained in a hotel etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean, with a boy with special needs, I mean, it was just panic in the disco. Like I just needed to get information. I, I could not get information for the life of me. I called the PHAC, which is the Public Health Agency of Canada, multiple times. And they too were like, we don't know. So until I went right to the route of the MP, I wasn't getting any information. Uh, so it's it's just a little um, unfortunate and, and, and upsetting, but at the end of the day, uh, information is key and power and I just want to know where I'm supposed to go and who I'm supposed to get help for and how we can travel without the added worry of anything happening to us. Um, moving forward, what will you be doing next time? Like, how are you going to handle it next time? Well, 
let's hope that there's a an exemption list. Do you and think if, you did you get managed to get it done yesterday? Yes, we went to Security Med at Stillview. Um, the girl was really nice. The secretary there. I paid one hundred and seventy nine dollars for each of us times two, so three fifty eight uh, to get tested. Um, and I've of course been advised by the office of Greg Kelly to of course keep my receipt and uh, get wait and see. And again, I have to be negative to even get on the plane. And I'm only going to find out tomorrow, which I have zero symptoms. Either is my son healthy, whatever. But we also know the reliability of the testing is not so great. Um, so fingers crossed that I'm getting on that plane after all this, right? So all yeah. right we're gonna check we're gonna circle back to you and check on how you're doing but we um wish you wish you well this weekend and when you're off and gone and we will be posting this so that those of us that you know it, it, it helps the government also understand what's going on if they see us talking they may have they may have missed it like we said they're at the beginning of the like they're not in the beginning of this but they're in a it's, it's new for them every single time so let's hope that they tweak this for your future travel and those of others who are doing non-essential travel for those with special needs Yes, absolutely. And that's, I guess, all you can really ask for, right? That's what we're doing. We're raising awareness. Yeah. So let's exactly. hope that. And we're wishing you the best of luck. Have a great, great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Appreciate it. Ron Bye. Ron from West Island News signing off.